Yo friends, welcome to Next Level Consciousness with Linnea Stella. I am back with a new video about shadow work. And I know that many of you who are subscribed to this channel, you really like to watch movies about psychedelics, about trip reports. But the thing is that as much as we love going to the other realms, what the mushrooms always tell me is that you chose to incarnate as a human to have the human experience too. And not always to be floating around in the higher dimension, feeling like you are the entire universe. Now the gift with psychedelics is when we can take that feeling and we can bring it into the human realms. But in the human realms, there exists something that doesn't always exist in the psychedelic realms, and that is the shadow. So what is this infamous shadow? Because there is a lot of talk about it in personal development, spiritual communities that, oh, you need to do shadow work. And uh, for a long time, I felt resistance towards it personally. Not that I'm afraid of the dark, but more so that it became almost like yet another spiritual badge that people were wearing. Like, oh, I am doing so much shadow work. I'm healing so fast and I'm integrating all these shadows and I'm crying every day and all of a sudden it almost got more important to feel the emotions and to almost be in a constant state of suffering than it became to actually enjoy life. And I believe that the truth lies somewhere in between. We are here to experience contrast. That's really what makes the human experience so juicy and lush. And uh, I mean, just imagine that you're eating a nice, delicious meal. What makes it really good? What makes a difference from the leftovers from yesterday, from a five star, what is it? Three star <laughs> Michelin restaurant meal is that they play with different consistencies, with different textures. They play, they include contrast in the experience. Because contrast is something that we can experience as humans, but can be experienced as souls. I don't believe so, at least not in the same way, in the same form, in the same extent. Because there is this oneness on the soul plane. Whereas in the physical, in the human plane, there is duality. So what is a healthy frequency of doing shadow work? As with everything else, I say always listen to your intuition. Because you are constantly guided. You are guided by your higher self, you are guided by your team of spirit guides, by the universe itself. But my compass in life, in general, is am I following love? Because when you follow love, nothing can go wrong. And sometimes love will tell you to go into the dark and to really sit and feel all the feelings and be present with your shadow. And the challenging thing is that this doesn't happen at a set schedule. So, so maybe you have planned to do something a night or you plan to see someone and then you feel like I really need to be on my own and I need to sit with all these emotions that are coming up, sometimes out of nowhere. Sometimes they get triggered by something and other times it can be because of eclipse. When I'm fil filming this, for example, we are in the window in between eclipses and we are soon to see a new eclipse. And those kind of cosmic events can also be kind of the trigger points that push us. The most important thing is that this is a priority for you. When you feel like there is something that needs to be processed, that is the absolutely most important thing to do when you have a moment when you can sit with your emotions. So what is shadow work really? Why do we need to do it? So I see it as you have two kind of aspects or parts as a human being. You have the human part, which is the physical body, which knows like happiness and sadness. It lives in the realm of duality, good and bad, right or wrong. And then you have the eternal part, which is your soul, your spirit, your higher self. And I personally lived the first 30 or so years of my life only in the human realm. And I can't speak to everyone, but to me, that caused a lot of stress and anxiety. It actually caused me to be in this constant state of low level anxiety because I felt like I, the human part of me, needed to control everything. Then I had a spiritual awakening overnight and I got connected to the bigger infinite grid. I got connected to the vibration of unconditional love. And I realized that I don't need to control, I just need to trust. 
I just need to follow love, but I don't need to be the one that's leading in life. And that was a huge relief. And I've experienced very little anxiety since then. And I think this is true for many people who are connected to either something spiritual or follow some kind of religion that feels aligned, but really believe in something bigger than ourselves. It's so comforting. So as a soul, it's true that you are love and light. That's why many people early on in their spiritual experience, if they have been completely asleep and they have an awakening and they feel this unconditional love, which is the core vibration of the universe, they can be in this, oh, love and light, love and light, you know, this state of wanting to escape and avoid the shadow and only seeing the higher aspect of our experience as human beings and avoid that lower level. But I find that the truth often lies something somewhere in between. So we can be in only being in the human realm and then we bounce to the other extreme, which is that we only see the soul aspect of things. But that is not healthy either, because then we deny the fact that the human parts of ourselves, like the reason that our souls chose to incarnate, was so that we could have certain experience and also heal certain things in the soul through the body. And if this sounds a little backwards, this is what we do with somatic experiences, right? We can access things from past life, from our ancestral lineage, from uh, early childhood, things that are stored energetically in our body, but also in our spirits. We can access it from somatic practices like movement, shaking, breath work. I love to go to the gym and lift heavy things and I really feel like it helps me energetically, but also through sex because sex is the portal between the physical and the spiritual realms. So where does the shadow come from? The shadow comes from many different sources. If we start backwards in time, if we believe in the concept of linear time, it is all the traumatic experience that your soul had in past lives and that you haven't been able to properly process and integrate that were stored as a trauma. Then we go to when you were in the womb and you got imprints from your mother and also imprints from the DNA, from both your parents. So we have the soul memory, we also have the ancestral, the DNA lineage that can imprint experiences on us that we don't consciously remember. Then we have early childhood experiences that we may have also suppressed because they were too traumatic to look at. It can be even a little thing that the little child us saw as a rejection, for example, or an abandonment, and it got stored in the body as a trauma. So all these different sources, and then we have also from when we grew up and our adult life and things like being betrayed, being heartbroken, different things, traumatic experiences, accidents, things that we have been through, grief. An important thing to notice here is that it's not about the experience itself. It's about how we processed it. It's about what lens did you see the experience through. And this is why we do the thing called inner work, spiritual work, personal development, because then we have tools to be better equipped because life will happen. We will go through things that are very heavy and traumatic and sad, but they don't have to have this heavy, heavy weight in our system when we know how to properly process them, aka do shadow work. So how do you do shadow work? How do you integrate your shadow? I'd say that there are two ways. There is the spontaneous way and intentionally. Intentionally can be that you are, for example, in therapy, you do some kind of coaching, you are in ceremony, maybe sitting with plant medicine or some other kind of ceremony, and you intentionally look at something that you want to heal. Maybe there is a wound, maybe there is a negative pattern. Because if you wonder why is this so important, it's because your shadow determines your whole life experience, right? Because the belief that we hold, this blocked emotion that holds you back energetically will have you to take different actions in life. And life is a series of actions. So if you constantly take actions that are not in alignment with love, that are not in alignment with truth, but are distorted through the view of the shadow, the heaviness, heavy emotions like guilt and shame that can be attached to these experiences that we have stored in the shadow, we will never really fully live. 
but just survive and just keep repeating the same day, staying in our comfort zone. And that is what we want to avoid. But in order to be able to avoid it, we need to look at the shadow. So the intentional way, as I said, you can sit in therapy, you can do some kind of somatic experience too. For example, breath work is really good. Really go into your body and doing a spring clean and rinse out everything that is holding you back. Because emotions, negative emotions of your shadow are stored in the physical body. So it's all connected here, as we see. Unintentional or spontaneous shadow work is when you just feel out of nowhere anxiety or you feel fear, you feel just down, indifferent, depressed, something. But to me, it often expresses as anxiety. And that is the universe saying, pay attention. It's like the universe is trying to send you messages, but you're too busy to listen. And it's trying to tell you like, hey, you need to pay attention to something because when we feel it, we can heal it. There is something that has purged up to the surface that you need to look at to reach your next level, to reach that thing on your vision board, to reach the thing that you are trying to manifest in your life. So this is actually something very positive because it's really like you're driving on a road and you encounter a roadblock. Then you need to go out of the car and put away the roadblock. Is that how it works? <laughs> Or anyhow, you need to remove the block. Let's pretend that someone put like little nails on the road and you don't want to get a flat tire. Then you need to get out of the car and remove the nails and then it can keep going. But if you're just stopping and like, no, I don't dare going here because it's full of nails on the road, then you will stay stagnant. And another way that is very efficient to do shadow work, maybe the most efficient, is through relationships. Because all the people around you are mirrors. That's just how it works. And I must say that I've known this for many years intellectually, but I understood it very recently because I thought like, yeah, people are mirrors, but I can see myself, <laughs> you know, 12,000 Leo in astrology. But then I realized that what if you're walking around and you have a white shirt? That was a bad example because I have a black, <laughs> a black one. Uh, but you have something, you have spilled a little food, a little carrot soup on your black shirt and it's a stain and you just feel something smelling a little funky but you don't really understand what it is and you feel like people are looking a little weird at you but you don't understand what it is because it is in a place that you can't see maybe like here but other people can see it so when you meet other people maybe they will point and they'll say hey there is something at your shirt that maybe you should look at and then you may react by being upset and like why are you pointing fingers at me or you may express gratitude and say, oh, thank you so much. I didn't know that I had that stain and I wonder what was smelling a little funky. I wonder why people were looking at me like a little weird, but now I get it. I know that I have a stain and I can actually remove it and I can move forward in a more pure state. And that is exactly how it works in relations with other people. They will, maybe not literally, but between the lines point finger at you they will reflect back at you, sometimes with words and actions that will trigger you, sometimes energetically. The things that are out of alignment with your highest self, with your soul. And you can choose to be mad and to hate on the messenger, or you can be grateful and thankful and say, oh, okay, I see this reflected back to me. Now, the interesting thing is also that different people will affect you to a different degree. And I believe that people that you have a soul resonance with, that are part of your soul family, they will be on a more similar frequency. So everything will be magnified and you will see things much more clearer. And you will see things reflected back more clearly than someone who is quite far away from you as comes to soul vibration. But all people around you and everything can be a teacher. It's just up to you to choose to see it. So, okay. All good. You know where the shadow comes from and you know ways that you can work on it. An important thing if your shadow comes up unconsciously, spontaneously. When you're, for example, sitting and working and doing something else and all of a sudden you feel this hit of anxiety, is to not suppress it, right? Because we have learned to suppress our emotions. We have learned to try to band-aid them, to run away from them, to escape, distract ourselves from feeling but you gotta feel it to heal it. So when the universe sends you a little message with, for example, a package of anxiety or doubt, be thankful. 
to the extent that you are capable. And then stop whatever you're doing and look at the feeling, sit with the emotion. Because it has been proven that you can't fully feel an emotion for more than, I think it's 90 seconds. And often when we don't want to look at it, it keeps chasing us, right? This feeling that is part of our shadow that is arising for healing. But the thing is that these feelings, these lower vibrational emotions that are part of our shadow, it's called a shadow for a reason. And that is that when you shine the light of awareness on it, it vanishes, it disappears. But you have to be brave enough to stay present with emotion instead of running away. And that is real shadow work. And this can feel so scary and it can feel so painful. And if you feel like you need support with this, don't hesitate to seek support in different ways. That is why we have things like therapy, even coaching, plant medicine, all these things can help you process your emotions so that you can release that part of your shadow and move on. And I say part of your shadow because oftentimes we don't have like this huge shadow and then like this, it's completely gone. And I mean, everything is possible in the universe, but what I have experienced and what I've heard from other people is that often this happens in layers, like peeling the layers of an onion. So you get rid of one part and then you think, oh, it's all good. And then you get triggered again and it's time to get rid of the next part. And that is why being triggered is something positive. It's just that you need to gain the emotional intelligence to understand that this is a sign that it's a part of my shadow that's about to release. All I have to do is to be present with it. But a shadow often contains very low vibrational emotion. And you know what the two most low vibrational emotions are? Guilt and shame. And these can feel very challenging to be present with. Like, I know that shame to me, it feels like so uncomfortable and so icky. It feels like taking an ice bath and I have never taken an ice bath. <laughs> but I've been present with, with shame. And I have really noticed that the more you stay present, the more it loses its power over you. It doesn't feel that dangerous anymore because you know why? You realize that you are not your emotions and this is, this is the whole solution. You are not your emotions. This is what will allow you to do the shadow work. Because why many people feel it's unbearable and they carry and hold on to so much resentment and guilt and shame. It is because they have internalized these emotions and they confuse it for who they truly are. They think that these emotions are parts of their personality. I am this shame that I'm holding on to. So of course, somewhat twisted, you don't want to release the shame because that feels like releasing a part of you and that feels super scary, of course. So subconsciously so you're holding on to that shame, holding on to those negative experiences and thus holding on to a part of your shadow. So you must really come to the realization that I am not my shadow. I am not the negative emotions. I can just sit with them, I can watch them and emotions are just energy in motion, right? It has nothing to do with you as a soul. So here is where we can see how we can do this little ping pong between the human realm, which is the realm of density, duality, but where we can also experience things as pleasure and joy as a result. But also we can gain comfort from the soul realm, from knowing that, okay, I have this experience and I had this very shameful, embarrassing thing happening to me, maybe when I was seven, year old, seven years old and I'm still holding on to that. But that is not who you are because you are this soul, you are just having an experience as a human. And it's nothing to be ashamed of, like literally. So that is my take on shadow work. You can do it intentionally or spontaneously. And the whole idea with shadow work is really to feel it, to heal it, to be present with it, even if it feels so scary, even if it feels like you're standing in a wild river, in a tornado, it can't hurt you. Your feelings can't hurt you and it will pass. And once again, seek support if you want to, but also know that you're capable of hard things. You're capable of so much more challenges and difficult things that maybe your mind is telling you. You are so strong and you are so brave. And I really believe that shadow work needs to go hand in hand with our personal development journey. Because there, it's one thing to be conscious on the level that you know about, for example, moon circles or cacao ceremonies, and you attend all these conscious gatherings 
and you take the photos for Instagram. But you avoid to look at your shadow. You don't want to look at all the things that you've been through. And you see these repeated negative patterns happening in relationships, for example, but you just feel like you have bad luck. Then you're missing the whole point with a personal development journey. And I know that I sound arrogant now. <laughs> but it's just because I see this happen quite a lot. And I am by no means perfect myself. I sometimes may tend to escape or distract, but at least I have the intention to always be present with everything that comes up and I can catch myself. And the key here also is to have self-love and self-compassion and to talk to yourself as a little child and not shame yourself for trying to avoid the shadow because it can feel so, so scary. It can literally feel like you're thrown into a wild river and that you are not gonna make it, that you're gonna die. But that's just an illusion. Right? And there is so much liberation. That is why we do all this. That, that is why we go on this inner journey. That is why we do the shadow work. Because on the other side of fear is freedom. So thank you so much for watching today. If you liked what you've seen, please hit the like button because that will help more people learn about shadow work, get in, back in touch with themselves, love themselves more. And that is why we're here. And if there is some topic in particular that you want a video in, please let me know in the comments. Have a lovely rest of your day, night, and see you later, alligator!